The summer tours are edging closer. England's squad for their matches against Japan and New Zealand is edging closer as well because following the semi-finals in the Premiership, yesterday on Monday they announced the latest squad, the second training squad, I suppose we can call this one, as Steve Borthwick called in players from Saracens and from Sale after they lost in those semi-finals. So that's what I'm talking about in the video. Some of the headlines that have come out of that squad and some of just the more interesting points, I think, of players that have been included. So comment down below, give me your view on where you think this squad is at the moment. But as I'm going to get into right at the start of this video, it's going to change so much anyway. It's quite hard to properly analyse it. But nonetheless, the comment section is where you can go. And also, when you're here, like the video, subscribe to the channel. But to kick things off, as I say, this doesn't include players in the Premiership final. No Northampton players, no Bath players, for obvious reasons. England have got a four-day camp this week. Those players are busy preparing for a final at Twickenham. So there's still going to be so much change in this squad that actually I find it quite difficult to fully analyse and fully assess where England are or exactly what they're looking at and the direction they might be heading in for this tour because I don't think we can properly get an idea of that until we see the full squad, in, until we see the players included from all of the Premiership teams, including Northampton and Bath, to get a better understanding of maybe where this team is and where the strengths and the weaknesses are. That's my feeling on it. You might disagree, but I can explain what I mean by this. So as I say, no Northampton players and no Bath players. I just made this quick list, very quick list of players from both of those teams that I think could be part of this squad. So it's a 33 player squad already at the moment. And there's going to be so much chopping and changing because just look at the players that could or maybe should be involved. The ones with question marks next to their name and the ones that might be involved, but I'm not too sure. I suppose Trevor Davison, I could have put a question mark by his name, but after his performances, I think he may well be involved. But for Northampton, I think Curtis Langdon will come in. He's been brilliant at hooker. Mitchell, Finsmith, Furbank, Freeman will all come in. And then obviously you've got Tom Pearson as an option in the back row who has been around England squads before without ever fully breaking through. He's maybe a bit of a question mark. And Ollie Slightholm, who, along with Faye Wabosa, has been the form winger in the Premiership this season. So could he come in? We don't haven't really seen him involved before, but I just wonder whether we might do. And then likewise for Bath, I put a question mark by Ben Spencer's name just again because he's kind of never fully been part of England. I mean, I know he was kind of under Eddie Jones for a little while. We have seen him involved. So despite how good he has been, he's a question mark. Will Muir is similar, brilliant in the Premiership, has been involved in England training squads. Will we see him involved this summer? Ollie Lawrence, Will Stewart, I think will be involved. Ben Urbano, Ted Hill, Charlie Yules, who've all been playing well. So my point is, you look at the list of names there, which was a quick list I drew up. There might be other names that you would throw in there, whether it's Alex Coles at Northampton or whoever it might be. There will be a lot of chopping and changing. This squad will change a lot. But nonetheless, this is what it looks like at the moment with the inclusion of the Saris and the Sale players. I don't think there are too many huge shocks. Guy Pepper, who's going to be playing for Bath next year, been at Newcastle over the last year, is the only player from the previous 19-player training squad that has dropped out. The headline, I suppose, if you were to look at the newspapers and look at what has grabbed the attention, is Tom Curry and Tom Curry's inclusion. Because Alex Sanderson, director of Rugby at Sale, has been quite... Well, honest, I suppose, in his view that Tom Curry played his first rugby since the end of the World Cup, coming off the bench in that Premiership semi-final. And he looked brilliant, by the way. He's a ridiculously good rugby player. And I'm really glad from that point of view that him and his brother Ben are both in this England setup because they're both great players. Tom's an excellent player and it's good to see him back. But what Alex Sanderson was, has essentially been saying is it was a hip injury. It was a degenerative hip injury for Tom Curry. And he's basically said the more game time he has now will take game time off the end of his career. There has to be a balance for Tom Curry. And actually the suggestion being maybe he shouldn't go on this tour. He's only just come back or certainly if he does go on the tour, his minutes are heavily managed. And again, we are seeing the kind of 
wrestle between clubs and the RFU, which has gone on as long as time itself, longer than probably I've been certainly watching the game and most of you would have been watching the game, depending on your ages. It is a constant issue. It is a major part of the negotiations of the new professional game agreement or partnership, whatever they're calling it, which is hopefully going to come into effect in English rugby over the next few years. So that is an issue. What's my view on it? For me, Based upon the quality of player Tom Curry is, he obviously absolutely deserves to be there, even though he hasn't played too much rugby. But I look at the options in England's back row, look at the players that are already there in Cunningham South, Ben Curry, Don Brandt, Earl, Fissalau, George Martin could often, has done, played at six, Ethan Roots, Tom Willis, not to mention the guys from Bath, and from Northampton that are going to come in. Does Tom Curry need to be on this tour? Would it be better for him to be rested, to spend more time getting himself back to full fitness and ready for next season? Particularly given the fact, and I know some people hate talking about four-year cycles, but we're a long way away from a World Cup. We don't need him right in this moment. Or maybe you say England's best chance of winning in New Zealand is with Tom Curry in the team. He therefore goes. It's an interesting debate and conversation. Which side of the line do you fall on? I think I would be more cautious. And I think my instinct would be to rest him and not necessarily take him. But there we go. Another player that I really want to mention, and any of you who are longer term viewers on the channel, in particular when I talk about the Gallagher Premiership and I talk about Sale, if you watch my team of the year, in fact, I put him in it. Joe Carpenter, part of this squad. He has to go. I'm delighted to see him there. I think he has been one of the most consistent informed best fullbacks in the Premiership over the last few years and hasn't necessarily received the plaudits to go along with that because I think he's just a complete all-rounder. I think he's great in the air. We saw that in the semi-final this weekend against Bath. I think he's great in attack. We saw that in the semi-final against Bath, but he's also good defensively. He can do a whole number of different things and down the line, Maybe we're going to be having some interesting conversations about the England fullback position. It's George Furbank's jersey at the moment, deservedly so. I think Joe Carpenter deserves to be there. What does that mean for Freddie Stewart? Now, there's also a world with the multiple positions that, that certainly Furbank can play. Freddie Stewart, we've seen shift onto the wing before as well, that you could fit them into squads and teams. It's not necessarily one has to drop out because the other two are there. But I think that could be a narrative that we have down the line, possibly this summer. And I really want to see Joe Carpenter get game time, particularly that Japan game. I'd love to see him start that Japan game and get a good chunk of it because I just think he has been class. I think he's brilliant. Elliot Daly, by the way, not part of this squad. He, him and his partner expecting the birth of their baby. So for family reasons, he is uh, not around not going on tour, which is completely understandable. But you look at also with Furbank now, with Freddie Stewart, with Joe Carpenter, you do wonder whether, I guess, where does Elliot Daly sit within this England team and England setup? He's a brilliantly versatile rugby player, but certainly in terms of fullback, I think England have quite a few good options there at the moment. The one other position that I wanted to mention was scrum half, only because Rafi Quirk is there. And if we look at the scrum half options at the moment, so you've got Harry Randall and Rafi Quirk and Jack Van Portfleet. Alex Mitchell will come in following the final. Will Ben Spencer comes in? The scrum half options are quite interesting. I think Rafi Quirk is there, not because he's going to go on tour. This would be my prediction. Could be completely wrong. I think Rafi Quirk is there because Steve Borthwick recognises that if he can stay fit, he's potentially the next starting nine for a long time for England. I've been saying this for quite a while. I think Rafi Quirk is brilliant. I just think he's had so many injuries. He hasn't been able to get a run of form together and therefore he's dropped out of the dropped out of the pecking order both for Sale and for England. But I think Borthwick recognises his talent. He wants to get him back in camp, start to get him back in the environment. But I don't think we'll quite be at the point where he goes on tour because of the injuries and the lack of game time. And maybe he hasn't quite refound his very best form either. But I think they want to have a look at him. And that excites me. I feel bad for Gus War, who's been brilliant for sale, starting in place of Rafi Quirk and doesn't seem to get a call up. But I can understand the qualities that he has, why he is there. So those are my top line thoughts on where this England squad is. As I say, there's going to be so much change. I also think we will have, we will be having more in-depth conversations down the line 
particularly about the front row and the props. So we've seen Joe Marler and, and Dan Cole come into this squad. Finn Baxter is still there. Joe Hayes is still there. Does Trevor Davison get in from a Northampton Saints perspective? Is it Will Stewart and Benno Urbano? I think that front row for England, particularly with Ellis Genge's injury, is going to be something that we'll be having a chat about, which is on Monday, by the way. So the England squad comes out on Monday after the Premiership final. So there will be content coming your way on that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. Make sure you like the video to hit the algorithm and boost it to as many people and comment down below. What do you make of this squad? What do you make of the Tom Curry inclusion, of Joe Carpenter's inclusion, and of Rafi Quirk's inclusion, or anything else that you want to touch upon on the names at Steve Borthwick and England, the RFU, released on Monday. Look forward to reading them. I'll see you in the next one.